if you freelance, um, you are unstable friend to be with. Why would they? They think I you want to like, like, whoa, like suddenly borrow this... money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. I freelance and no money. Can you treat me? <laughs> no. Hi guys, Annette here. Welcome to another episode of Glowing Up. So today I have a very special guest with me. It's none other than Xenia. Hi. So I'm sure you guys uh, are no stranger to who she is here on YouTube. Uh, but you know, uh, today also we have another guest who is uninvited. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so today we're here to talk a little bit more about our journeys from full-timers to freelancers. Uh, that transition, what it was like for us. And I put together some questions and I also crowdsourced some questions from you guys on Instagram. Uh, Y'all sent some pretty cool questions. So I put them all together. They're on my phone. So the first question is, uh, how long has it been since you left your full-time job? 2019, around September. So now it's... To the myth. Three years? Three. Yeah, okay, the mine's a bit shorter. I think right. like 2020, like middle of 2020. Mm. I resigned during Circuit Breaker, you know. Wow. Yeah, so wow. Freaking size. Yeah. <laughs> what a bold move. <laughs> no, I think I really, I full on existential crisis during oh. that period. So I cannot, it's like now or never. Right. Okay, so, okay, so for me, it's, I think, yeah, I guess one and a half. Yes. Mm. Sorry, I'm very bad at math. I just made that up. Is that what I have? Mid 2020. It's so okay. Like, if you are wrong, right, the comment section will <laughs> tell you the right answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you know it was time to take the lead? Was it very scary? Wow. I feel like at that point in time when I made the decision to leave, there wasn't like, oh, I must earn this amount of money, then it's the time to, you know, fly, freelance, or they just, I, I just didn't plan for it. Lah. I think. I would blame it on New York because back then I was, you know, like traveling, enjoying myself, learning a little bit about acting in New York. And when you are there, right, it really opened up my eyes because there are people who would take a gap year just to learn a new language. If you say that to your parents in I Singapore, wish I, could do that. I think you know, I would get slapped and eh? like, huh? <laughs> like, what are you doing with your life? So yeah, so I think that uh, gave me a lot of options in life lah, where um, I think it's okay to take a break, to go and figure out what you want to do. Yeah, existential crisis, I totally can relate. Um, yeah, I would say I didn't plan for it. I don't know until now when it's a good time to make difficult decisions. But at that point of time, it was a gut feeling where I feel like I grew out of certain things and I just want to try something new. Actually, it's very similar for me also. Mm. I think I had contemplated it for a very long time, like a couple years, right? But mm. I just didn't have the time or energy to, right. or, or even courage to put it into action until everything came to a screeching halt. Mm. And yeah, it, during the, the, the circuit breaker period. And like, okay, like maybe now I have time to think about it, I'm gonna think about it. It was scary, of course. Like you say, right? You just because it's a period of I don't know what to do. Yeah. So you're making a, a, a decision based on I'm not even sure if this is hundred percent the mm. right decision. But you also yeah. know that you'll have the uncertainty if you stay on anyway. So yeah. I guess it was it was a scary period. Yeah, but I think for me when I quit, it wasn't scary. It was very exciting. In fact, I was like, yes, a new journey. But after that, ah, uh, that's scary. Crazy. <laughs> COVID. So, so like I oh, said, Oh yeah, because right? was before. Oh, I already yeah. had the worst of it already. <laughs> wow, I'm freaking, right? <laughs> like, worse than this. I'm freaking damn scared, no? So 2019, I like, wow, YOLO. Oh, everybody was like, wow, like very proud of you. Like, you inspired me. I was like, oh, thank you. I was very proud of myself. And I come back, <laughs> oh my God, 2021 is going on. So when COVID hit, um, I think the first few months, I legit didn't have anything going on mm -hmm. because I think at the point of time, a lot of companies were also adjusting, right? Adapting to like, oh, maybe you should bring everything to the digital space. So at the point of time, it was very scary. You just have to deal with it. Like, with or without COVID, things like that are going to happen if you choose to freelance. Wow, mm -hmm. then okay, for you, right? Because you had mm -hmm. that period, like, okay, not scared, then suddenly scared, right? Yeah. Like, did yeah, you I... suddenly regret your decision? <laughs> for okay, <a> like, <laughs> I feel like I just want to say no, no regrets in my life. But fun fact is during that period of time, I actually applied for an internship in a production house because I was like, I'm going in for all these auditions, right? I was supposed to do a travel show. That's the reason why I came back. It was for the $100 Nomad season two. And I was supposed to go China and oh, Japan. Oh, not go anymore. Yeah, so I think everything, like my plans all got shifted and I had to adapt. I think on my end, I was trying out acting 
and with auditions you really it takes a long time or there is no results at all sometimes you wouldn't know you get the job and it was very scary for me lah so to me i felt like it's okay maybe if acting is not for me at this point in time, I'm okay with it. And what other options do I have? Like I'm very logical. Which is like, okay, I also enjoy behind the scenes work, but I don't have experience as much as others. So maybe I start with an internship. So I really sent in an email and asked, and they got back to me asking me to send like my CV and go for an interview if I'm free. But then I was like, how about do I put in my CV? <laughs> like, just pull your, I don't your, know your what, videos. Ah. Yeah, but I, I don't know whether those are legit experiences. Why not? Of course it'll be. Is it? I don't know. Like, I was like, wow, oh, shit, this new journey, exciting, lah, but a bit scary when you're actually <laughs> doing it. Thankfully, during that period of time, right, an audition, the casting director got back to me and I got a role. So then oh. I was like, okay, I guess this one I can wait out a bit. Yeah, then slowly it just became a lot easier and smoother, thankfully. No, actually, so for me, I was super scared. So uh, that was like, I Oh, started... before you quit, you're scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I was scared for two years. <laughs> right. Before I even left, scared mm. for two years. And then after that, when okay, so when I left, I just told myself, I'm starting from zero right now. Yeah. I'm rock bottom. I can't like get Go. any worse than this. Right. Because I feel like, I really felt like I was starting from zero because of all my effort for like so many years, like mm. I, I devoted to, to a platform, right? And then, yeah. When I left, like, it was myself. And I wouldn't say I had a, a lot going for myself back mm. then. Yeah, so I had to mm. just start everything off from scratch. So I was just, oh my gosh, if I fail, I... Okay, law, I'll just fail, law. Yeah. You know, it was between, like, continuing in a space where I feel, okay, maybe I can't, I can't grow as much already. Mm. Or taking a risk to do something scarier. But I might have more opportunities to be able to grow in terms of my craft and everything, lah. Mm. Yeah. So it's scary, but... I'll say it's worth it. Yeah, I feel like you pulled through shining like a diamond. Eh. Really, oh, really. Hey, thank you. Like, oh, legit, legit. Like you really glow up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, now these are like very serious, practical-ish questions, which is, do you need solid savings or an established portfolio before you quit your job? Okay, la, I think the answer is yes. As much as I am all about, you know, chasing your dreams, like be wise. Yeah. Still. Yeah. You you really do need at least two, three percent of certainty, you know, in something that it could be your strength, what you already know you can do and you enjoy doing. Secondly, is are you sustainable? Are you going to be able to not eat grass while pursuing something that you really like. Yeah, I think these two are the fundamental questions you have to ask yourself before you take the leap. Yeah, I feel mm. you you need to prepare for the rainiest day. Uh. Imagine if the worst possible scenario happens after you quit your job, right? Mm. Like, you will still be able to pull through. That's partially why it's, it's scary for people, right? So, yeah. in terms financially also, I just felt like, how am I going to find clients? Let's say I don't get anyone for a period of time because mm. like, will I have enough savings to get through the period? So, the answer is yes. Mm. Yeah. And I think portfolio-wise also, I felt like I was a place where, okay, I had enough yeah. Yeah, to be able to be confident to do stuff on my own. So, yeah. short answer, yes. Yeah, yes. It's, yeah. it's very important. La. I feel, to those of you who are watching, if you are going to quit your job to pursue a hobby that you haven't tried on the side while having a full-time job, my answer is try it as a hobby first. Yes. While keeping your full-time job. And then see whether you like it. Because... Chances are, I mean, I, I love doing videos. I love last time before I was even hot chicky lace, I would wear, wow, dress nice, nice, then take OOTD. <laughs> la, that's my very homie thing. Like, it was something that I enjoyed. La. But when you turn it into an occupation, a job, right, that you do need to earn from it, at times it takes the joy away. I feel yeah. like you should give yourself a trial period first without much risk involved. Yeah. It's very good. You know, actually, so there was someone else who asked this question, which I felt is a sub question mm. to this question about solid savings. If starting out and offer a chance to join a, a team or an agency, should I? Which is similar to what we did. So the answer mm. is actually, I would say, yeah, go ahead and do that. Because we're in, in the creative industry and we do more like talent work, talent work. Yeah, so, like in front of the camera. Yes. So this person is saying if they leave like some full time job and they also want to do in front of the camera stuff, should they at least sign to an agency? agency who will help them manage and I would say yes because honestly if we're talking about safety net that's also a pretty good solid safety net I would mm. say so actually after I left SGAG I was still with them on a non-exclusive talent contract for a year mm. and then you were at um so when I quit my full-time job and I came back 
from New York. I was under TSL for a year first. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah, then after that, I got into TCP for a year and then now I'm on my own, managing myself. Yeah. yeah. So, so those are the different ways you can also hire like a freelance manager that mm. will work for you, yeah, if you get what I mean. Or I think what is really efficient and also productive these days is building a team yourself with interns first. I think this is something I've been seeing a lot now with content creators out there because you kind of really know the direction you are going for and you know exactly how to chart your career. Then all you need is people who can help you execute that. Whereas if you are a little bit lost, like uh, you don't really know what you like, uh, you need someone to guide you, then I think going into an agency might not be a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's why so I think in that sense, we are kind of quite safe people still. <laughs> yeah. Like we didn't really like just leave into the world. world. <laughs> yeah. So we, we both had a, a kind of gradual transition phase in that sense. I didn't completely mm. go from full time to straight up independent. Neither did she. Yeah. But I, I think that's good, you know. I do appreciate maybe being in a more conservative uh, Asian society. Yeah. Which because the thing is that I think our whatever we're doing now, our profession is already pretty unconventional. Yeah. So I like that we have that practical side from right. society to make us think a little bit more about that. Mm. Because I do think sometimes this whole quit your job to freelance thing can be a bit romanticized, especially you know in movies like yeah. You score the boss, then you, right. you walk out and then like end a movie and then you become super successful. Yeah. That's usually not how it works. And actually most of the time, I think it's it works for it works. that one person now that you see in Hollywood. Yeah, uh. and it's fictional, <laughs> it's not very real. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, I, I would say just play it safe. Don't play it too safe because I mean the fact that you don't want to go and try something out is mm. a risk in and of itself. But be wise in your decisions and uh, don't be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know? Yeah, yeah, have some savings and an established mm. portfolio and get some help if you need along the way. Okay, so that's a very interesting question. How is it living a life of fame? And I actually just asked, a, a, I added on the other part which is that yeah. did it give you more fears or like more courage to quit? Oh, it is a very good question. Eh? I think when I quit my full-time job, like I said, I was very scared after that, right? It's almost like a breakup, like when you... Oh yeah, tell yeah, me about Yeah, like when you tell your ex-boyfriend that, like, you know, uh, let's break up. I really like clean break. I won't look back. Then I go home, I cry, that kind, you know? <laughs> it, it, it's an overwhelming feeling. So with fame, although I do know that uh, I'm sure some clients I've worked with probably know my existence, yeah. and will remember me but at that point of time it did not give me any courage at all in fact I still feel like it is going to be hard without someone helping me yeah and I I would think that uh, my analysis uh, because that is my first job for so many years leaving your first job in itself is very scary whether or not I'm famous it's not gonna give me courage to quit in fact I think with fame, it gave me more fear to try new things because I know when I try new things, I might look stupid and I might Actually, fail. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah, I, so for me also, right, my answer to this question is that if anything, I think it's a bit scarier because there's so much more pressure now. Correct, right? yeah. Then like people already know, they'll be like, wow, see now, you gotta see her new video, wow, them shit. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be scared of that. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll be more scared of it. I think it's just a lot more pressure that you have to, like people are watching you to see whether you are performing or like, you know, mm. whether you're, you're failing or not failing, right? Also because numbers, in our in our job a lot of following is great it's like we are famous right numbers are very important in terms of our work you know be it like following engagement likes comments even to me i don't see numbers as like or oh, just fame and that's it to me numbers is like did i do well for this campaign did i do like what i'm expected to deliver yeah so i would think that fame in fact is a bit more negative for me la to, to like go and try out something new, to go and freelance, yeah. How do you deal with expectations from your family, friends, and even yourself? Yeah, let's go first. Okay, you can go first. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you've been going first a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I think this is similar to the previous question in a sense where 
Yeah, because you know, I did in in that period where I was at SK, right? Mm. I mean, I did achieve a bit, I would say. And so I feel like okay, once I left Hansa, I need to either exceed that or mm. at least maintain it. If not, right. I will personally feel like a failure. But mm. I think because I I just have very high expectations of myself, and mm. I'm the kind where I just want to make good stuff. And if it's not good, then I'll just self critique and then just make it better. So to, mm. in my eyes, it's like I want to look back years from now and like okay, I can see that there's improvement. Right. So it was it was more. More of that, and I think actually uh, uh, what I appreciated about like starting out sort of on my own, right, was mm. that I started to care less about say whether it's like a numbers game or mm. or like money or whatever. Mm. I I just wanted, I guess because I had savings, but <laughs> <laughs> but I. I really wanted to just improve, and I I wanted to focus on that because I think when you're in a company, there's so many other things to worry about. Also, mm. right? not just you know like hitting hitting numbers, hitting yeah. It's just so many other things that you got also fulfill. And I think I was able to put that aside and then focus on. I just want to improve mm. on whatever I'm doing mm. and just get really good at it. And I could manage that expectation rather than dividing my attention to so many other little things that I do. I think similar to you, I do have like standard lah. All right, this line and it's called senior standard anything below that i will get very like annoyed at myself right a bit frustrated like why can't i be better but i didn't plan as much for what i want to do um i really just took it one step at a time but i think last time while i was doing those videos i think the common thing that we have is we have been creating or if not fronting a brand for so long how do you think of yourself without the brand? Yeah, that sometimes I forget. Like, <laughs> is it I'm us? Like, hey, <laughs> you know that kind. Hey, you you're from here though. Do do ask you that. Yeah, the girl. Girl, people ask me whether I'm from SK. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Sometimes no, I I'm at the like, cafe. Then they say, Hi, are you are you from TSL? <laughs> then I'm like. <laughs> oh my god! I went to an audition, and then this one I'm damn pissed to tell her like, like she's wrong. wrong. <laughs> so I just went with her. Uh, so she said like, yeah, I really love your show on SG. Then I just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, thank you, thanks. And then just like, so how you leave SG already? Then I just went like, oh no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know what to say, you know, then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I left long time ago. <laughs> I think what my dad said was very comforting. So if you're a freelancer out there, you know, you need some comfort. My dad, my dad said, 得失不重要. If you have campaigns, you have projects, just do. If don't have, never mind. The next one will come. Just trust in that. Oh. Yeah. Nice. 得失不重要 means gain, whether you, you gain or you lose, it's not important. I think he's trying to also like okay like a deeper meaning would be don't um, fixate on your wins and losses. Yeah, that's not who you. That's not your only value. You get. What I mean? Yes. You get. What I mean, like you have so much more about you. Uh, that are good. That are bad. Also, uh, more than just your work. More than just the amount of projects you are getting. Yeah. So I think he really wanted me to focus on that lah. Now that I am. Freelancing. I think actually I appreciated that like going independent because I set I set the goals for myself and I mm. I'm able to also just look at things from a more holistic perspective mm. because when you're in the grind especially like nine to five you can get a bit caught up in it mm. yeah but I I enjoy the flexibility of being able to okay now I'm taking a break. Yeah. Or today there's nothing I can go out and grab a coffee mm. and like just you know not fix myself into just thinking about this all the time and then right. like I realize okay there's more to life than this there's mm. more to myself and person to just mm. yeah the wins and losses uh. there are some people who asked in the crowdsource questions or so mm. um, did you have friends who suddenly started to stay away from you when you left to freelance. And I was like, that's a very interesting question because all my friends were super supportive. Right. I, I don't have la. Right. I mean, Fauzi is still pretty much in my life. I'll still go and text him if I got questions. <laughs> no, stuff. I think they meant like as in your other oh. friends who are not in the company, like just general friends. Why would they? They think I you want to like, like whoa, like suddenly borrow this... money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. I freelance and no money can you treat me. You know. I feel like my friends are all quite like go for it, man. Yeah, exactly. I'm proud of you. Yeah. 
So I'm like, oh no, who is this person? Is it the friends around you have been saying that if you freelance, um, you are unstable friend to be with. But yeah. okay, I do have like my lifestyle did change a bit lah because when you freelance, right, you don't work a nine to five, you know. So sometimes yeah. I like work at night that kind. Then my free day is like Tuesday nine to twelve p.m. But like everybody needs to go to work, right? So when I'm a freelancer, I would say not that my friends don't support me, but I don't have as much time for them. Yeah, just because of my irregular schedule if that is what you mean yeah do you feel isolated by friends or ex-colleagues when you transited to freelancing or like do you feel formal towards people who um, like your ex-colleagues who are who are climbing the corporate ladder in TSL no la nothing much has changed in terms of individual friendships I have with like Fauzi, Adria the, those people that are, I'm still close to nothing changed because I left the job yeah, mm. the friendship is still there. Yeah. Right. Maybe the topic that we talk about will be a little bit more different. I remember when I first quit. So, of course, like, they're still in the company, ma, so sometimes they will, like, talk about their work and stuff. Then I realised, eh, hey, I'm not inside already. Then I will be like, huh, can tell me more? Like, what happened? Because <laughs> I'm no longer in that space, in the same space, you get what I mean? So I guess that's the only thing that has changed. Other than that, like, it's quite okay. Yeah. Mm. I, I was looking at this question and I was mm. thinking, yeah, like, do I feel, like, formal when everyone's co- climbing corporate corporate ladder, right? Because mm. honestly, we, we went on this path and then it's just you mega took a detour like bye and then yeah. just, it's like a mega fork in the road right yeah and it, it does feel very lonely because mm. all of y'all are going one way and now suddenly yep. you're the only one who's going somewhere else right Fine, maybe you weren't the only one maybe quite a few people mm. left or so but you do have that sense of feeling alone la. but i must say aside from the initial oh my god i'm doing stepping up by myself right <laughs> i i don't feel any formal towards like Climbing a corporate ladder, eh. I actually feel I also, better, you know. I also right. Yeah, I feel like wow. I don't. Have, I'm not. No longer have to be. You know, tied to to this system of like. Uh, do I get a promotion? Yeah. Should I ask for a promotion? Then yeah, your pay raise and stuff like that. Cause I I feel a lot of times like, especially with what we're doing, mm. it's more important. Uh, how. Say, let's say we create content, right? It's more important mm. like how people uh, react to it, mm. um, how people uh, are engaged, yeah, mm. and like positively impacted. So, like now I'm able to like hundred percent focus on that rather mm. than like split my focus between that and between yeah. like I need to get a promotion. Yeah. So yeah, I don't feel FOMO mm. at all. To me, I also don't feel FOMO, but I guess corporate ladder they are different goals, and you are working toward goals of the company or what your boss set for you you know things like kpi more often than not like your personal goals working in this full-time job is not prioritized it's just like you own self like if you want to like go and do passion project then you pitch to your boss law. so that's your only satisfaction i guess the rest is really achieving goals for the company or for your department but whereas when you make the detour right i guess many people they have their own ladder you know that they built like maybe for some people they really want to earn a lot of money right in the media industry there's no right or wrong then to them their goal wouldn't be like it's okay if the engagement falls short it, then it's more of like quantity how many can i take how many brands can i work with in like a short time span to get myself out there and then if your goal is you know uh, which is similar to both of us improving yourself like making better content then you wouldn't care about how many projects you can get but more so like if you give me this project how differently can i do it how like personal can i craft it that is uniquely me yeah so at least if you are freelancing you can build the ladder yourself yeah Yeah, i like i like what you said about like i guess it's where the ladder leads to like where's your Mm. the the destination your ladder leads to and i feel like when you're freelancing you can kind of just move that Uh, wherever you want Mm. Yeah, so I yeah I do enjoy that. Okay, so the next question is, um, do you feel stressed by the income instability? There's a sort of question that also asks, kind of related to this question, which is whether we earn more or less. But if you're not comfortable talking about that, we can talk about it. No, no, I can talk about that. Like. At the point of time when I quit, I realized what I did on the side was actually going to earn me more than my monthly pay if i were to calculate aga aga i think for us financially it did make more more sense to to freelance Convert, rather, yeah. than, rather than stay um at a full-time job but there's also that risk where sometimes yeah. 
you might ha- not have nothing at all during like a month or so or something. So yeah. fine, like the months where you you do have jobs, you definitely earn more. Mm. But the months where you don't have jobs, then how? So for me, I don't spend mm. like crazy a lot of money. Mm. So say even on the on the months where say I earn more than I would at my full time job, yeah. I'm able to hold it back mm. for a rainy day. So mm. that the next month I really don't get anything, it's fine. Because I do partition mm. like what do I want to spend on and most of the time I, I want to pour it back into my work. And mm. I actually appreciate that because I feel that when I pour it back into making like not sponsored content, like just right. my own stuff that I yeah. want to do, like brands still come on board and mm. want to work with me. Yeah. yeah. So it just creates more of a cycle. Yeah, and right. creates that stability in that sense because I won't ha- won't go dry for a long period of time. Yeah, I think for me, I'm not bothered by the income stability part now. But that's only because last time I wasn't very good at saving up and finances. And it was something I had to learn. Even the simplest thing like keeping track of the campaigns that you have done, all the projects that you have done so that you can do your taxes. Doing that on my own and making mistakes and like learning from it has put me in a place where I'm certain that like, okay, if this month I don't earn, I won't die. And then I can maybe eat one time Hai Di Lao instead of five times. <laughs> you know, your agak agak will know. Because mm. I had the worst moments where I really don't know whether they pay me for this project already. Then like it becomes more and more messy because you don't keep track. Yeah, so from that day onwards, right, I hated that feeling. I really did everything. Excel like, sheets. Yeah, Excel sheets. Well, I'm a pro. Yes. I should put that in my resume. <laughs> Anybody want to hire? Expert. <laughs> Excel <laughs> sheets. <Yes. laughs> I would say freelancers, we get paid more because um, there's a lot of things that we don't have that mm. uh, full-time, that like there, there aren't full-time benefits. Mm. So for example, if you have a full-time job, you have health health insurance or mm. it like you get yeah and then CPF. Yeah CPF, mm. states of leave, all that. Yeah. So those are things that you you technically don't get. So I don't get Ooh. maternity leave. Oh my god. I mean I'm not there yet. Good luck to you. Okay no nothing's happening guys. So, <laughs> but like if you know I were to yeah um, like get pregnant and I'm at full time company. Right. Damn shook you know. I know Wow I get paid for three months not doing anything. Right. So I was just like mm. That'd be nice, but now I'm sorry, it's too late. <laughs> and also the payment is you need to be prepared that when you finish a job, it doesn't straight away go to your account, you know. Keep Sometimes track. it takes like 60 to 90 days to reach you. Oh, and yes, the worst yeah, yeah, yeah. is beyond 90 days where you need to ask for it. Yeah. So this might result in you know your income not being stable in a sense because now you're not getting monthly pay. You know this month maybe you close a few projects, but you have to prepare that the money will come to you late, most likely in this industry as a freelancer. And you really have to have enough to thank all of that uncertainties and all the factors that we share. So I would really say the best way is just don't blow your money on like when when there are good months, you know. Mm, mm. Yeah. Then you'll have that income instability stress. Yeah. yeah. So just don't do that to yourself. Mm. What are some unforeseen challenges you faced after transitioning? So for me, ha, mm. is self discipline. Right. I I think after you full time for so long, it's almost as if you forget to how to be a disciplined person. Like how to be a human and wake up in the morning. <laughs> no, as oh, in, you forget how to to discipline yourself. Because oh. it's a very like external locus uh, where you uh, uh. where you do work because you are asked to do it right from nine to six right but suddenly there's nobody asking me to do stuff you can don't do or if I you can don't like do. it <laughs> <laughs> I totally so, understand yeah I think the harder part also was especially doing stuff that is not with a client or something mm. like there's nobody mm. literally holding me accountable to make TikToks yeah. every day yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to set these goals for myself and it's so hard to to, to stick to that right yeah. because there's no consequence even if you don't do yeah. it and you know like similar what you say you have to just yeah. suddenly figure out oh my gosh I have to do things by myself wow. I think that was hard lah. but I appreciate it like, I think it does mm. help you grow like right. it's very character building mm. yeah. yeah I matured a lot yeah even when I was under agencies because there, there, there were things I still need to learn and do because I'm sort of freelancing still. If there's no jobs coming in, I have nothing to do, right? And I think the one thing that I learned freelancing is to say no. I think to say no was very hard for me because I'm a people pleaser. And when I was in my first job, I was a yes man. Everything is like, okay, I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to do. And 
because it was my first job, I said yes with excitement. You want to send me to Indonesia? Oh my god, yes! Like, <laughs> what do you need me to do? Like, crazy a lot of work? Yes! To me, it's like, wow, this is so fun, you know? And I think as you progress, you will learn that it is okay to say no. And you shouldn't feel bad about it. Of course, if you are in a full-time job, based on circumstances, right, it's at times a bit hard to say no because you are paid to do those jobs, yeah. But now that you are freelancing, you have your own goal set, don't be afraid to say no to things that don't speak to you. Yeah, yeah and that's something, something I had to learn. Yeah. Hard, hard, very hard. Yeah, for people people please. Please. Like, I just feel a bit bad. <laughs> so, so sometimes, sometimes when I say no, I will recommend a friend that I think is suitable for the job. So, so at least like, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, help okay. you, you know? Yeah. I, I found that if you learn how to reject sometimes, then you mm. can give more to whatever you agree to. Yeah. yeah. Like really right. give your best best. Correct. Yeah, and that's, that's also how I learned. Um, I think last year, was my best financial year where I really did earn a lot of money but when I was evaluating 2021, I was very unhappy. Like, oh, why? creatively. Because I was doing too many ads really. Too many campaigns. And this is of nobody's fault. It's I own self want to hustle. You get what I mean? And it's only through that year then I realised like, I don't want to hustle like that in terms of quantity. It make, it made me very unhappy. Was I proud of some of the projects I've done? I feel like I could have done better. And this feeling, I don't really like. So then this year, I would know and I would adjust, right? That yeah. like, okay, now I, maybe I want to find a balance. Or in fact, it's also perfectly fine if I want to lean more towards what makes me happy instead of stressing over like this might need to take up how many jobs, how many projects, yeah. Especially if you're going into the creative industry, it's very normal to have like the burnout phase, mm -hmm. the like too much campaign phase, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a journey long where you slowly learn and, and adapt. All right. So we've come to the end of the video. Thank you so much, Senior, for joining me today. No problem. It was super fun. We spoke for super long. It's yeah. like an hour. But I'm going to edit this so that it's not so long. Um, but yes, if you enjoyed this video, do like and comment and subscribe. And uh, you can check out Xenia on all her socials. I'll also link it in the description. And uh, I'll see you guys next time on another episode of Growing Up. Yay! Bye-bye! Bye! Bye. Bye. Think, uh, think first, okay? Must have money first, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you sound like your uh, your typical <laughs> typical typical Asian mom. Help! He is acting as a mom, by the way, in an oh upcoming drama. Yes. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, the new show is called Sunny Side Up. Yeah, and I am playing a tiger mom, which sometimes I'm a bit scared. I'm too into character. Okay. No. Yes. So, it's a good reminder. Yeah, 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 but I mean, you just tiger mom to everyone, which is great. Yeah. Sometimes you need that, so go yeah. check that out as well. Hmm. Bye. See you guys. Bye. I'm really gonna end it now. It's my hour. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs>